So Kevin, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, today we're talking about molar mass and Avogadro's number. Okay. So Kevin, how many years have you studied chemistry for? I think I've studied chemistry for, I think, three years now. Okay. Um, and have you ever used Avogadro's number for anything other than a, an activity in a chemistry class? No, not, not really, to be honest. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, I think it, it really only matters in chemistry class. And even for people who are chemistry majors, the actual value of Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, probably only really matters to chemists who are using lasers and trying to actually count uh, electrons and photons. That's really the only people for, who would ever use that number on a routine basis. However, um, it is a really important concept because it underlies a lot of what we do in chemistry calculations. And so um, when we, when Avogadro's number was, was determined, it enabled a lot of uh, calculations, uh, enabled people to go from the atomic molecular level to the macroscopic level and back and forth and understand what could be happening along the way. So um, from my perspective, it's really useful for students in this class to have some understanding of Avogadro's number and why it's important and to be able to use it every once in a while. But it's not the sort of thing that people are going to uh, carry on and use on a daily basis unless they are a very, very specialized type of chemist or maybe a physicist, I suppose, as well. But if you're trying to count photons in, in laser experiments <clears throat> and that sort of thing, it can be quite useful. So, Kevin. Next question. Why do we care about Avogadro's number? Well, you're taught in general chem that that's the number we use to, to determine how many atoms or molecules are in a gram of something. We use it as a conversion, I suppose. Yes, exactly. As a conversion. It's a conversion from the macroscopic to the atomic molecular level. And like some other words that we use, um, it's a very specific number. We use it just as a way to keep track of how many atoms and frankly, maybe one day we finally get to the point of saying, hey, we understand how big 10 to the 23rd. It's really kind of incomprehensible. Um, <laughs> it's just a mammoth number. I mean, I don't even know if I could recognize 23 zeros if I saw them, <clears throat> let alone what they mean. So. Okay, so should we use it for something? Yeah. Okay. So um, Avogadro's number is defined as the number of atoms in one mole of carbon. And I don't even remember today why carbon was chosen. Maybe it was because it was the most simple one. But, uh, um, and so we use Avogadro's number uh, as a way of converting then from number of atoms to number of moles. So Avogadro's number is the number of atoms in one mole of carbon. And that's how it's defined. And then we use it for every other uh, element, compound, any, every other substance that we're trying to figure out how much one mole of it is, okay? So let's say that we've got uh, two moles of carbon, and I want, and you're asked, I don't know why you would want to know this, but you're asked to find out how many 
atoms does that represent? So I'm going to go from two moles of carbon over to atoms of carbon. So uh, this is dimensional analysis. We're going to get rid of moles. And so I got to have moles of carbon on the bottom. And I'm trying to get to atoms of carbon. And this relationship tells me that for every one mole of carbon, I must have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. And that will tell me that in two moles, I therefore hope we get that decimal place a little bit better. I'm going to have, well, 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon, which we probably wouldn't leave it written that way if we're writing in a scientific notation. We'd want to move this uh, decimal place over to one to get the 1.204 times 10 to the 24th atoms of carbon. What do you think? Okay, that makes sense. But um, you you wrote on the top that the Avogadro's number is the number of atoms in one mole of carbon. Is it only used for carbon? That's an excellent question. It's defined as the number of atoms in one mole of carbon, but then we can use it for lots of other things. So let's go for, okay, so that was question number A. B is, suppose you have 3.86 moles of sodium comma how many atoms does that represent question mark fair enough same okay. process 3.86 moles of sodium times moles of sodium on the bottom and i'm trying to get to what am i trying to get to atoms atoms of sodium and so 3.86 moles of sodium uh one mole of sodium oh it's the the number is defined by that so it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd uh atoms of sodium So I've got 3.86 times 6.0, oops, made a mistake. 3.86 times 6.02 equals 23.2, we'll say four times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Um, so that's gonna be 2.324 times 10 to the 24th atoms. And because I feel pretty confident about that, I'm going to circle it. <laughs> um, what do you think? OK, so it can be used for any element. OK. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that they sometimes do in, in chemistry classes, I don't know why they would ever do it anywhere else. But anyway, sometimes they, sometimes they say, how many uh, atoms oop, in uh, 4.2 moles of, we'll say, sodium hydroxide, question mark. And so you go through that exact same process, 4.2 moles um, times um, one mole of sodium hydroxide 
and we know it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Uh, okay, now, here's where it gets a little tricky. I'm gonna just leave our grab there because it's really molecules of sodium hydroxide. And we're gonna come up with some answer here, but this is for the molecules of sodium hydroxide, and there's actually three atoms in each molecule. And so sometimes I'll ask, how many atoms are in three moles? Well, we'll do this, and then I have to remember that I'm gonna write it all out again. 4.2 moles of sodium hydroxide times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sodium hydroxide in one mole of sodium hydroxide. And I'm trying to get to atoms, so I know that it is one molecule of sodium hydroxide, but it actually has three atoms in one molecule of sodium hydroxide. And so you do the exact same math that we just did, but because they're asking about a compound, then you gotta pay attention to the number of atoms that are in that compound. And just for completeness, let's figure this quick final. So I'm gonna go 4.2 times 6.02 times three equals 75.85 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium atoms. It, and that really means 7.585 times 10 to the 24th atoms. So those the, sometimes people are asked that kind of awkward question. And it's just, just checking to make sure that you're paying attention to that. This is a molecule and it has three atoms in there. Yeah, just kind of making you pay attention to wording, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, what else should we do with this one? Anything? Um, I think even though that you don't use Avogadro's number too much outside of chemistry. It's still important to this course because we use the moles. We use moles in stoichiometry in our calculations all the time. So just even if you're not using the number in your calculations, just understanding the concept is going to help you a lot. Yeah, it's, it's really critical. I know that for myself, um, sometimes when I see mole, it's very convenient that we use the term mole for the amount of a, a substance, but I know that it's the reason they chose it, at least I assume the reason they chose it, is because it reeks of the term molecule, but it is not a molecule, right? It, it is a mole of molecules. And so it's, uh, it's both really advantageous because it's convenient. It's a convenient name for the unit, but it also is a little bit deceptive in that it can lead us into thinking that um, we're talking about 4.2 molecules in this case. No, no, no. We're talking about 4.2 moles, which is a hell of a lot of molecules. <laughs> so yeah, really exactly. Right. So molar mass, um, like it says, is the mass of one mole. And so if uh, for, like, <clears throat> like we just saw for carbon, you can take it for a single for an, any individual element. You can take it directly off the periodic table. So here's a perfectly nice periodic table I found online. So here's hydrogen in the in the top left hand corner, and it's got a mass number down there of 1.008. And so that tells us that the molar mass for hydrogen is 1.008 grams per mole. And right below it is lithium and it says the molar mass for lithium is 6.94 grams per mole and that's the mass 
as we were just talking about, of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of lithium. Or this is the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen. So the mass number that is shown on the periodic table is the mass of one mole of uh, that particular uh, element. Now, sometimes if we have some elements that form together to form a compound, we might want to know the molar mass of a compound. So if we do water, let me, um, let's, let's remember that hydrogen is 1.08, and we're going to need something for the oxygen. If I come over to the oxygen, we'll see that oxygen is 15.999 grams per mole. So hydrogen 1.08, lithium 6.94, and um, oxygen 15.99 grams per mole, straight off the periodic table. So if we're looking for a molar mass of a compound, like uh, water, we know that it's got two hydrogens, so it's two times the hydrogen, and it's got one oxygen, so it's one times the oxygen. So two times uh, 1.008 grams per mole for the hydrogen, and one times 15.999 grams per mole for the oxygen. This two times 1.08 is going to be 2.016 grams. One times 15.99, I can do that in my head. Grams. And so for water, it's got two oxygens and one hydrogen. So I'm going to add those together. And I could do them in my head, but I'll probably carry my ones wrong incorrectly if I do that. So I just want to double check, make sure I do it right. So I'm going to go 2.016 plus 15.999 equals 18.015 grams. And that's, we were talking about one mole of water. So it's 18.015 grams per mole um, is the molar mass. water. And I'm pretty confident about that, so I'm going to circle it. So that's water. This periodic table, the one that we used just now, provides these values to four significant figures and five significant figures for this oxygen. Sometimes you'll see periodic tables that only give you one or two significant figures, and so your value will be a little bit different depending upon the precision that is given for the information that you start off with. So for, but for us, we can get to 18.015 grams per mole. But I have to say, when I think when most, most of the time I see that's 18.02, i.e. that they've rounded that five up to a two along the way. So you just use whatever precision uh, the periodic table gives you at that particular time. Let's do, let's do one more then. This time I'm going to do lithium hydroxide. Okay, it's a nice base, and I've got the, I got the, the, the numbers just sitting here right for, right for me. So I know that I've got one times lithium, I've got one times oxygen, and I've got one times hydrogen. So that's going to be one times 6.94 grams per mole, um, one times 15.999 grams per mole, and one times 1.008 grams per mole. So 6.94 plus 15.999 plus 1.008 equals 23.947 um, grams. 
And what I would say about this one is it looks like this top, ver the, the value for lithium is 6.94, three significant figures. We're adding, the, the, up, adding up these numbers so I can keep this second decimal place. So I can, I think I have to round my seven, use my seven to round my four to a five. So 23.95 grams per mole for lithium hydroxide. What do you think? Yep, that looks good. Using the information that I had. Um, let's do acetic acid because I know that's one that, that appears in the lab pretty, quick, pretty early on. So that, that's uh, CH3COOH. Acetic acid. It's, the, it's well. It's the most important, but not the largest component in vinegar. Okay. So I see that I've got two carbons. So I'm going to go two times carbon. I've got four hydrogens, four times hydrogen, and I've got two oxygens, two times oxygen. Um, I quickly share my screen to make sure that I get what I want out of this deal. I come back here and I share this one and I see carbon is uh, given it to us at 12.0, oh, hold on. Ah. Carbon is given to us at 12.001, which probably means we need to have a conversation about that. Hydrogen is four times one. Oh, sorry, I have to break it. Stop the share and come back here. So, uh, two times carbon, two times 12.001 grams per mole, four times hydrogen, four times 1.008 grams per mole, and two times oxygen, which is 15.999 grams per mole. So two times 12 is 24, 24.022, that part I can do. Uh, four times this number I can do, 4.032 uh, grams per mole. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, oh, I can't, uh, I can't. <laughs> 15.999 times two. I know it's going to be pretty close to 32. But should probably be able to do this, but apparently I can. So two times 15.999. Yeah, 31.998. I think I should be able to do that in my head. 31.998 grams per mole. And so if I add those numbers together, plus 4.032 plus 24.022 equals 60.052. And as I look at this, I say I've got, I'm adding three numbers up, three numbers together. Um, all of them have three decimal places, so I think I can keep all three decimal places. And so I've got 60.052 grams per mole for CH3COOH, acetic acid. All righty. Thanks, Kevin. I'll uh, talk to you later today. Yeah. Talk to you later.